Okay, chapter nine is about uh, the genetics, microbial genetics. And this is just an introduction of what we're going to do with this, uh, in this chapter. And it's, it's basically talking about the chromosomes and genes. Um, the chromosomes, we will go to the sequence of each one of those, but basically the cell if this is just a cell, not, um, not uh, uh, a bacteria or prokaryote, it will have a nucleus. In the nucleus, we have chromosomes. Chromosomes um, are put together in a certain way that, that's composed of DNA. It's basically DNA. So chromosomes are DNA folded around histone. We will see all these details um, and how the chromosomes are made of DNA, which is made of genes, and so on. We will go one by one. Uh, DNA replication. The DNA is the mother or the blueprint of all genes in the body. This is where we have everything. It's, a rip it's, it's the, the source of the, blue, the blueprint, the blueprint. This is what we have. And if you are going to duplicate a cell for uh, either growing, you are replacing, or making um, a, a sick cells, reproductive cells, whatever it is, you are going to just duplicate the DNA. You will make copies of if your DNA, and we will call that DNA replication. And it, will should, it should be. It should be. The exactly the same thing. I have this DNA, I make a copy which is exactly the same. I call that DNA replication. And when you replicate something, meaning you duplicate or you make a copy of it. Exactly, it should be exactly the same. Whether we're doing that for um, a, a, a somatic cell or for a reproductive cell, and we know the difference, somatic cell, any cell in the body, livers, can anything uh, the germ cells are sperm and and, and, uh, and ova whatever it is you have to make the exact same copy this is completely different so um, uh, what we're talking about so far is just keeping the DNA and making exact copies out of it and we call that the replication okay on the other hand if you wanted to make a protein, whether this is protein that will be used in the structure of the cell, or you're making a hormone, or whatever the protein is, you're making a protein, or even an RNA, whatever you're doing, you are going to do a different thing, which is you're going to make a copy of part of the DNA. And we call that transcription. So. Trans, uh, um, replication is different than transcription. Are we following? Mm -hmm. Replication, you make a whole copy of a whole DNA exactly the same, okay? And this is for the purpose of keeping the same DNA, you're duplicating your cells, you're making the germ cells, whatever it is. You're making the exact copy of the whole DNA. And we call that replication. If you wanted to make a protein, on the other hand, you make a copy of part of the DNA. And this copy of part of the DNA, we call that process transcription. So transcription is to make what from what? Make RNA. RNA. Which RNA? <laughs> messenger RNA. You make messenger RNA out of DNA. Out of the whole DNA? No, out of part of it. Not the whole thing. Part of the DNA. And then this messenger RNA, it's going to leave the nucleus if this was a cell, and it's going to go to the cytoplasm where the ribosomes are located. And if you're going to do the next process, which is the translation. And translation is to translate the transcript into a protein. So DNA, can you tell me what you call it? You make DNA from DNA. What is, what is it called? Replication. Replication. You make messenger RNA from DNA. Transcription. Transcription. You make protein 
from the, from the transcript that you have, which is the messenger RNA. We call that translation. Mutation is a change in the code. We're not supposed to have any changes. This DNA, whether you are doing a replication, you're making DNA from DNA, or you're making a transcript, which is called a transcription, you're making messenger RNA from DNA, we have to, we're, su we're supposed to have it exactly the same if it is DNA from DNA. If it is messenger RNA, it should be the, the exact correspondent to the, orig to the original copy that you have. If something happened to that code and changed for some reason, we will call that mutation. And because of that mutation, of course, the transcript will be translated wrong, right? Here is my DNA. I have this. One, two, three, four, five. I have code for, four, for five amino acids, for example. You make a messenger RNA for those five. You translate for those five. If something change, whatever the level is, if something change in that code, you're going, whether you're making a wrong copy, which is a transcript, or the transcript itself become wrong for some reason, you're going to translate it into wrong protein or no protein, right? Doesn't have to be the wrong protein. It can be no protein. In all cases, most of the time, this is something that's usually harmful. Occasionally, it's not harmful. We will see. But most of the time, it is. This is if something happened to any code, DNA code. Recombination simply re means again. Combination means to combine. So recombination means to combine DNA from one cell to the other. This is recombination. To get it, I, I get part of the, this DNA and I recombine it to another DNA from another cell. I call that recombination. You can take DNA from bacteria to another bacteria. You can take it from virus to bacteria, from bacteria to virus. These are different ways if you're doing that, if you're doing that in the lab. But it can happen automatically. You don't have to do it, right? Maybe this bacteria will go to another bacteria and it will do automatic recombination. You didn't do it. Right? So recombination is whatever the way it's done, it's you're combining part of DNA from one cell, recombining it to a DNA from another cell. Whether this is happening automatically or you are doing that intentionally, whatever the reason or the whatever the technique is in all cases, it is recombination. Okay? Genetics in general is the study itself. You're just studying. So we call, we have different terms here that, you, that we need to um, uh, understand and know as we go. So genetics is a study itself. You're studying everything about the hereditary, about the genes, everything. How it is transmitted, how is it translated, how is it expressed in the form of traits. What's traits mean? Specific. To express what? Like a specific character. Yes. Like the the uh, the yellow hair is a trait. The the uh, the dark hair is a trait. Uh, whether you are short or tall, this is a trait, right? The color of the eye is a trait, and so on. So how is it going to be expressed? Uh, the function, the structure of the genes, any any changes that can happen. So all this study is called genetics in general. Okay. And the level of the structure of the genome is, if you look at the first one in the left, this, this is the whole organism, introbius, this is one of the helminthes, they're studying it. So you take one cell, this is the cellular level, you go into the nucleus, you can take one chromosome, and if you unfold that chromosome and look inside, you will see this molecular level. So you go, you go from organism to cell, to chromosome, to molecular level. Look at this here. This is the second part. You take the chromosome, you look inside of it, you will see this sequence, and this is something that we have to understand. This part is called the gene. It's part of the DNA. And each gene will, will consist of cod codons. We, we will discuss all the details. This is just introduction in the beginning. So here is a chromosome. If you look inside of this, you will see gene after gene after gene after gene after gene, okay? 
If you look inside of that gene, one gene, like this, you will see codon, codon, codon. What's a codon? It's H3 nucleotides. And this is one of the nucleotides. So let's do it like this. Here is a whole cell, right? This is the nucleus, okay? What's the nucleus contain? It contains chromosomes. Is that okay? I will take that chromosome and unfold it, okay? Just straighten it and look at it. What I'm going to see within this chromosome? DNA. Let me look inside the DNA. I will see patches. Each patch is a gene. Is that okay so far? Now I will look inside the gene. Each triplet. The gene contains a lot of triplets. Each triplet is called a codon. What's the codon? It's a triplet. Triplet of what? Of nucleotides. What are the nucleotides? We will discuss it. Okay? But you go from chromosome to DNA to gene to codon to nucleotide. Is that okay so far from level, from the big level to the small level? Because we will have a lot of details, so just follow as we go. So genetics is the studying of hereditary or the genes. What's the genome? Genome is the total of the genetic material, which is the DNA inside a cell. Everything that you have all together, we call it a genome. Okay, it's usually in the form of chromosomes. This is what we're going to focus on. But for your information, we should also count the genes that's located somewhere else. Do I have genes somewhere else beside the chromosomes? Yes, a little bit. You can have some in the mitochondria, chloroplast, or plasmid. Each one of those, it's not considered a chromosome. But does it have genes? Yes. So where, where, where do we have the vast majority of the genes, which make the genome? In the chromosome. Uh, do we have genes somewhere else, not in the chromosome, which is 90-something percent? Yes. We can have it in the mitochondria, chloroplast, and plasmid. Okay? So the genome of the cell is the DNA. This is if we're talking about cells. Which cells? Any cell. Any cell. You have DNA. This is genetic material, okay? Or the genome. Virus are different. Do we consider virus, we consider it cells? Is a virus cell? No, it's not a cell. The virus is not a cell. But it does contain genome. And it can be DNA and RNA. And we did the viruses already. Remember that chapter? It's some, some of them will be DNA and some of them will be RNA. But can we say genome, RNA in humans? No, genome in humans or any cell, not necessarily humans, is DNA only. So the only exception is viruses. So the chromosome is a packed DNA molecule, a big molecule that's packed. Why is it packed? Because you need to put it inside of the nucleus. You know how the, the, the actually the chromosome, if you unfold it, it will be as tall as me. Think about it this way. It's as tall as me. Okay, about six feet. This is if you, so you have to pack it all together. I can tighten it to put it in that very tiny space, which is the nucleus. Okay? Um, in that matter, eukaryotes and bacteria are different. Pro prokaryotes and eukaryotes are different. How is it different? Do you remember in prokaryotes, do we have nucleus? We don't have nucleus in the prokaryotes. We do have chromosomes, but it's, it's not inside the nuclear membrane, right? Do you remember the, the, what's the most important thing about the prokaryotes? And how do you, when do you call it prokaryotes? You don't have nuclear membrane, so it's not a nucleus. And you don't have membranous organisms. Wasn't that the difference? The main difference. So inside the eukaryotes, I have the chromosomes in inside the nucleus. While inside the bacteria, do you have nucleus in the bacteria? No, so it will be inside the cytoplasm. It will be inside the cytoplasm. This is one. Number two. In eukaryotes, we have multiple chromosomes, a lot of chromosomes. In bacteria, you have one. 
The other thing is, how does it look like? In eukaryotes, it's linear. In bacteria, it is circular. Are we following? Linear versus circular. And, in and this is very important uh, comparison between the chromosomes in eukaryotes and prokaryotes. This is very important, okay? Um, and uh, in eukaryotes, the gene will code for one protein only. And in and, and prokaryotes, it can be different than that. It can be for more than one. Okay, are we following so far? These are the differences. There is a difference between genotype and phenotype. When you say genotype, what do you mean? And when you say phenotype, what do you mean? When you say genotype, you're talking about the genes that is transmitted from parents to the offspring, right? This is the genome, if, so uh, this is the genotype. So if you're telling me what's my genotype, I will tell you details about your genetics, okay? About your chromosomes. If you're talking about phenotype, phenotype is the trait, okay? So if, if, if you tell me like something like this, my hair is black, okay? My hair is black. Can you tell me what's the genotype and phenotype? I will tell you yes. The genotype is the genes that are responsible for hair to be black, for your hair to be black. The, the black hair itself is the phenotype. Did you get the difference? Genotype versus uh, phenotype. Um, so this is the difference between those two. And the genes in general, the vast majority of the genes are going to code for proteins. If that's the case, we call those structural, structural genes. But these are not the only genes. These are the ones that, that we're going to focus on, okay? But these are not the only genes. And what's the gene? Are you following? What's the gene? It's, it's responsible, not necessarily a trait. The DNA is responsible for a trait. Mm -hmm. And the DNA is part of the DNA. But what's gene specifically means? A specific triplet that code for one protein. A specific triplet. Do you remember this picture that I showed you? Finding the chromosome and then you unfold the DNA. And this part of the DNA is called a gene. And this gene consists of triplets. And each one of the triplets, nucle uh, con con uh, the triplet is called codon, right? And each codon is three nucleotides. Did you remember this picture? Yes. So the gene is like a strand of the DNA? Not a whole strand. Part okay. of. Okay. Part of. It's, it's exactly like this. This is the whole chromosome, okay? Mm -hmm. If you unfold it and look at it, you will see it's a DNA. Okay, so far? This part from here to here, this is a gene. Which is a group of three. So if I put it like this, it's one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Are we following? So this from here to here is a gene. From here to here is another gene. So this is one, two. From here to here, three. Did you get it? So from here to here is gene. Here it is. Why is it from here to here? From here to here, to be responsible for making a protein or a trait, okay? So uh, let me look more under the microscope, under one gene, and the DNA contains a lot of genes. Are we following? Mm -hmm. So let me look more under the microscope. You will see triplets. Each one of those is called, each one of the triplets, a codon. And what is each one of those? Nucleotide, not the basis yet, nucleotide. Is it confusing? Yes. Chromosome is DNA folded and tightly coiled around histone. Mm -hmm. Okay for this? This is a chromosome. Let me look inside the chromosome. I don't care about the histone now. Let me unfold it. It's folded around the histone, right? Unfold it. And let me look at it. What is this? It's a double, it's DNA. Okay? Chromosome is DNA tightly coiled around the histone. Is that okay? DNA around histone. I don't care about the histone. Show me the DNA. What is that DNA? It's a double huge strand, two strands, and that consists of 
gene after gene after gene after gene after gene. What's a gene? It's a segment of the DNA that will code or that will be translated into one protein or a trait. Is that okay? So let me, let me look inside of that gene from here to here. It's triplets. Each, each one of these triplets, triplets mean three. Each triplet is called the coda that will code for amino acids. We will go to the details. And what's the triplet? Three, three what? Nucleotide. We will go to the structure of the nucleotide later, but I want to make sure that you got the big thing. Chromosome is DNA around histone. Is that clear? Unfold it from the histone. Show me what you have. DNA. Inside the DNA, I have gene after gene after gene after gene. What's a gene? It's a group of triplets. What are these triplets called? Codon. What's each codon consist of? Three. Three what? Nucleotides. We will discuss that the structure of the nucleotide, but so far are you following with me? From large to small. So, genes, like this segment right here, it can code for protein. This is the structural gene, and this is what we're going to focus on, okay? But it can also code for, for RNA, for another reason, okay? And it can control the, the, the gene expression. We call that regulatory gene, so it doesn't this gene doesn't have to be translated into a protein. It can make RNA, it can be controlling the expression of the genes, which we call it regulatory genes. So we have three types of genes. Even though we're going to focus more on the ones that make the protein, which is called the structural genes, but know that there are another two types of genes. And what's a gene? It's a segment inside the DNA, okay? So uh, here again, it's a genotype versus phenotype. Genotype is a genetic makeup. Phenotype is a translation of that in the form of trait. Okay. Uh, the size of the genome, and what's the genome again? Yes. The sum of all these genetic material. Okay. Um, so the, the, the virus, for example, contains four or five genes. Very tiny, very small. Four or five genes, that's nothing. E. coli, which is a very simple uh, bacteria, it will contain about more than 4,000. So you don't have to remember the, 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 the numbers, but know at least that virus just contain few. E. coli, it's just a bacteria, and contain 4,000. How about humans? 31 genes. We have 46 chromosomes for 31 genes in one cell only and if you unfold it it will be as tall as me six feet okay let me say something here to be clear every single enzyme is important to the extent of when you see these enzymes put it write it down in a paper a piece of paper or something and memorize it extremely important any single Enzyme. When I mention enzyme, extremely important. Okay? We have to know all the enzymes. So the DNA is super coiled. It's coiled around the histone. And why did you coil it and make it that tight? To fit into the nucleus, which is very tiny. Imagine that you have to fit six feet long inside this nucleus, which you can't even see. Right? So you have to uh, tightly coil it. Um, how is it tightly coiled like this? What keeps it in that? Why it, do it doesn't like unfold by itself? In prokaryotes, there's something called DNA gyrase, and this is the one that's going to keep it like this. In eukaryotes, on the other hand, it is DNA coiled around histone, uh, and um, uh, what's keeping it like that is the very complex structure. It goes level after level after level, so you don't need something specific to keep it like this. It's the way it was coiled that will keep it as it is. And it's DNA around histone. Remember that the chromosome is DNA around histone? Chromosome is DNA around histone. Tightly coiled. So you wrap it, you super wrap it, you three different steps in order to end up having this 
that will not unfold unless you want to, to, to unfold it. So again, if you look at this picture right there, it is chromosome. Okay, chromosome is a tightly coiled. This is chromatin, which is loosely coiled. If I look at it, it contains fibers. Um, uh, these are called the nucleosomes. Nucleosome is DNA around histone, and this is DNA. Or let's take it the other way around. Here is the DNA. If you unfold it, okay, it's coiled around histone, right? Here is one more name. Chromosome is DNA around histone. Is that clear? Chromosome is DNA around histone, tightly coiled. Around histones, a lot of histones, right? But each coil around one histone, I call that nucleosome. Are we following? Okay, so how many nucleosomes? A lot. Depend on the number of histones. So if you unwrap it together, if you wrap it together like this, it will be a chromatin fiber. A lot of chromatin fibers will make the chromatin material, and if it's tightly coiled, you call it chromosomes. Now we went all the way to this level, right? To the nucleotide. Are we following? Chromosome. DNA around histone, contain genes, triplets. Each of those triplets is a nucleotide. Now, okay? Now we came to the point of nucleotides. Whether you're talking about DNA or RNA. By the way, this is DNA, right? How about the RNA? It's just one of those. The RNA is one. And not even the whole one, part of it. Okay? So whether we're talking about DNA or RNA, it consists of Nucleotides. Each three would make a codon. What's a nucleotide? It depends. When you're talking about DNA or RNA, we're talking about DNA. Let me say this. What, where did you get the name from? DNA. D deoxy. Okay. Deoxy. R is ribose. It's a sugar. Five carbon sugar. DNA. Deoxy ribo nucleic acid. This is what DNA means. Deoxyribonucleic acid. Deoxyribonucleic acid. What's deoxyribo? Deoxyribo is ribose and you removed oxygen. Does it make sense? D, what's deoxy mean? Without oxygen, right? So here is ribose, which is a sugar, five carbon sugar. You take oxygen out of it, I call that deoxyribose. So what kind of sugar? Ribose or deoxyribose? Deoxyribose. So obviously RNA means ribose. So we're, we're talking about the structure here. Sugar, it is the, the general structure. We have sugar, phosphate, and base. Sugar, phosphate, and base. What kind of sugar and what kind of base? This is different from DNA to RNA. We're talking about D DNA now, so the sugar is the oxyribose. What's the sugar in RNA? Sugar. Ribose. Ribose, yes. So is it different from, is the sugar different from DNA to RNA? Yes. And the DNA, deoxyribose. And RNA, ribose. And this is where the name came from. What do you mean by RNA? Ribose, nucleic acid. Ribo, what's ribo? Ribose. So the first one, is the sugar part. Phosphate is not, it's not different. It's just a phosphate, right? Nitrogenous bases, we have four different nitrogenous bases. What do you mean by nitrogenous base? It's a base that contains nitrogen. And we have, Four of those in the DNA. <coughs> Adenine, guanine, thymine, and cytosine. Okay? Uh, from the chemical point of view, adenine and guanine are called purine. Thymine and cytosine are called pyrimidines. This is in DNA. In RNA, it's your cell. This is from the chemical point of view. We don't have to know the, 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 the details. What do you mean by purines? And what do you mean by pyrimidines? It's just a chemical category. They just belong to. So adenine, guanine are called purines. Thymine, uracil, cytosine are called pyrimidines. Or pyrimidines. Okay, so far? So nucleotide and another nucleotide and another nucleotide, this will make H3 will make a codon and we will make the gene and chromosome. But nucleotides are bound, bound together covalent by covalent bond. 
to, fer to form sugar phosphate backbone. <coughs> what do you mean by that? Sugar phosphate backbone is the sugar, which is deoxyribose in this case. You added phosphate to it. Sugar phosphate backbone. This is the backbone. This is the 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 uh, the back of uh, or the, the backbone of um, of the of the uh, DNA. Okay. Which is pyrene? Which is py pyrimidine? You need to know that. AG is purine, uh, TUC is pyrimidines. These nitrogenous bases, the nitrogenous bases, are also bounded by covalent bonds, together by covalent bonds. Okay, so you make it in the same strap like this to this to this can you see this this to this to this covalent bond in between those okay this is one strand same from the other strand and how the two strands stay together like this hydrogen bond okay hydrogen bond uh, for a will fit into the t and c fit into the g and the bond in between is hydrogen bond. What's holding the uh, nitrogenous bases together? It's a covalent. Do, do we remember the, the covalent versus hydrogen bond? So yes, so the nitrogenous bases are bound together by covalent bonds in the same strand. But, but if you are talking about the two strands, how the two strands stay together, hydrogen bonds. If anything is not clear, let me know. I know this is kind of complicated. Genetics is usually not easy, but we need to understand. This part is extremely important. What fit with what? Here is I have one strand, here is the other strand. What fit with what? Nitrogenous bases. A, T, C, G. At C, G. At C, G. A fits with the T by hydrogen bond. C fits with the G by hydrogen bond. Is this part clear? You have to remember this. At CG. At CG. This is how they fit together. How they fit together in the two strands. Okay? So look at this here. It is the A from one strand fit with the C. C with the G. G with the C, it's the same thing. T with A, right? Whatever the sequence is, they stay together by hydrogen bond. But this backbone right here, which is the phosphate sugar, what, what's holding these together? Is it a hydrogen bond? What is this? Covalent bond. You know why? Because you don't want to cut this from each other. Remember that the covalent bond is the, strong, the strongest bond? You don't want to cut this. But can you separate the, the two strands? Yes, you always do that. Which is a hydrogen bond, it's, it's a weak bond. Uh, the way the two strands stay together is called the anti-parallel arrangement. There is one end of the strand that's called the three end, and the other one is called the five end. But they fit together, look at this to understand what I'm talking about. Here is one strand, and here is one strand. My fingers here is the three, three ends. And this is the five end, is that okay? If I put together like this, I call that parallel. But look at this, it will fit like this. So anti-parallel. Three end, three end, five end, five end. If they are going to fit, which is not going to happen. If they, fit to, if they fall together like this, I call that parallel, which doesn't happen. What's actually happened is like this. I call it anti-parallel. So three five five three. Is that clear? It's anti-parallel. This is how it stay together. The code should be maintained during reproduction. That base pairing that we're talking about, that goes like this, and how they fit together in a hydrogen bond, should stay together 
uh, in reproduction. So if you're going to make a gamete or something, it should st stay together. Um, the, st the, the two strands that are going to uh, be replicated later on are called uh, the templates. But we will talk about it a little bit later. Uh, and it will provide varieties depending on the sequence of bases that will give us different varieties. Can you tell me this? Can you answer this question? Is it A or C? C. C. Yes. Okay, answer this. So this is something I, I left it like this, so I see if you're going to get it or not. Yep. It's usually you say, oh, T, T, A, A, no. There is no T and RNA. It's you. Okay? This is how, how the mistake can come. Are you, remember this. If I'm giving you a sequence, you need to remember. Are you talking about replication or transcription? Is that clear? If you're talking about replication, it will be T, T. Right? If you're talking about transcription, you're making messenger RNA. There is nothing called timing in the messenger RNA. It's called uracil. Okay? All right. So if they gave us, um, oh, never mind, sorry. Okay. All right. So now the replication itself, how, it, how is it going to happen? Remember that the two strands are winded together like this. It's not like this, like, look, look at this. It's not like this. It's like this. It's winded like this, twisted, okay? So you're going to unwind it, unzip it, and then you are going to replicate the two strands at the same time. I will make a copy of this strand and this strand. Uh, am I going to make a copy of this? And after I'm done, I'm gonna make a copy of the other one? No. You're making copies of both of them at the same time. Is that clear? Like this, look. Here are the two strands. This, copy post at the same time. Okay? And you're going to make a two complementary strands. So you call this process semi-conservative. What do you mean semi-conservative? I mean, this, these are the two strands. I'm going to separate them, right? This is one template, and this is one template, right? And I'm going to make a complementary strand to this one. So how much does it have from the original? It has become two now, right? I'm going to make a one, one from this and one from this. This will be a DNA, and this will be a DNA, right? This had one of the two strands original, and this have one of the strands original. So we have one original and one copy. I call that semi-conservative. Semi-conservative. Okay? The original one, both of them are the templates. But what's going to happen is I will have a copy and copy. So look at this. These are the original strands, the templates, right? Look at the red. The red is the copy. So you end up having two DNA. But look at this. This is semi-conservative. It has original, which is blue, and red, which is a copy. I call that semi or smart conservative. Um, where exactly are, going, are you going to start the replication? There is a spot that's called the origin of replication. Origin of replication. This is exactly where the replication is initiated. Where do you start? Origin of replication. Okay? If, you're up, if you are talking about the transcription, this is if you're talking about replication. What if you're talking about transcription? Transcription will, will occur when something called RNA polymerase attach to the region that's called promoter. So this is not supposed to be here, I just put it for comparison. If you're talking about DNA replication, do I understand the difference between replication and transcription? Yes. If you're talking about replication, where do you start? Origin of replication, done. 
What if I'm talking about the transcription? Where do you start? Promoter. I start at the promoter. When the DNA attached, DNA polymer, uh, RNA, I'm sorry, RNA polymerase attached to the promoter. Okay? Uh, you make something, if you're, if you're starting this process, you make something called replication fork. Fork is like this. Okay? It's, it, it was like this. But when you separate the two strands, not the whole two strands, it goes like this. Look at this. I'm going to unwind. I didn't separate yet. And I'm going to separate exactly like this. Look. Right? So are you making a fork now? Yes. This is a fork. It's not like this. No, it goes like this. So I, as you are separating, you're making a fork. What's fork is like this. This. And we call that the replication fork, in which you're going to do the replication. So the first thing that you're going to do, you're going to un, um, um, unwind the, uh, the, uh, the chromosome. And the enzyme that's going to help you with that is called helicase. Uh, are the enzymes important? All of them. Every single enzyme is important. So helicase, if you forgot it, understand what does it mean, OK? Helicase. Ace means an enzyme that works on something. Helic means the helical, which is this. This is called helical. So helicase is an enzyme that will break down the helix, or it's going to unwound it. Okay? Uh, you, you will have two strands. These are called the leading strands. Leading strand. So what's a leading strand? The template. The enzyme that's going to help you with this process, then when you start to make the replication itself, it's called DNA polymerase. So what's the difference between helicase and polymerase? Helicase, if you break down the helix, right? You're breaking down the helix. Uh, polymerase, it's, uh, polymerase is coming from polymer. Polymer means you're making a copy, polymer, okay? Uh, it's these nitrogenous bases, you're making copy. We, we call it polymerase. So polymerase is the one that's going to make the copy, which is the one that's going to act, do uh, the actual replication, okay? So polymerase is the one that's polymer. What do you mean polymer? I mean a lot of nucleotides, a group of nucleotides, polymerase. So it's going to add the nucleotides in a 5-3 direction toward the replication fork. I have a video for that I will show you so you imagine more what I'm talking about. It will, it will do it from the 5-3 direction, uh, and this will be a continuous strand. Uh, on the other hand, you're making the other uh, leading strand, will make another copy, DNA, will make, DNA polymerase will make it, but in the other way around. The lagging strand, which is the, the other strand, uh, will proceed backward, away from the replication fork. Okay? So in that the case, you're making fragments. And these fragments are called Okazaki fragments, and you need to remember those. Okay? I, um, I know you, you didn't imagine exactly what I'm talking about. I'll show you. And then you will um, join these fragments together by, by something called ligase. If you forgot it, ligase is coming from ligation. You know what ligation means? When you ligate something, you ligate something mean you put them together, you attach them together. This is what ligase means. So let's see the, um, uh, the, vid the video um, to have a better understanding. So remember again that you are going to make copies in, in uh, it's semi-conservative. Here is the template and here is the other template, right? I'm going to make a copy. What is the name of that copy? It, it depends. The one that's, that come from the 3-5 the, the, uh, the, the direction is called the leading strand. The other one is called the lagging strand. The leading strand is, um, is continuous. The lagging strand is not continuous. Okay? 
and then you're going to put them together in a, um, uh, by the enzyme ligase that's going to attach these fragments together. Enzymes that we use, we start with this helicase that's going to unwind and unzip. DNA polymerase that's going to add um, uh, the nucleotides. Uh, but it's two different ways. Leading strand is continuous. Lagging strand is sh fragments that are called uh, segments or fragments that are called Okazaki fragments. And then ligase is going to ligate them together, meaning hold them together. So here's helicase, DNA polymerase 3, and ligase. Can you answer this question? Yes. Okay. Uh, the next part will be the transcription and translation. We talked about replication already, right? Now transcription. What's transcription? You make what from what? Yes, which RNA? Messenger RNA, yes. So if you look at this here, here's the DNA. Look at this, I think it will make the picture more clear. The chromosome is DNA around this stone, right? These are the DNA, look at this. This is gene, 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 gene right? And then when you do the transcription, this is a DNA template. You're making messenger RNA, and you call this process transcription, right? And the transcription, does the messenger RNA have T? It's you, right? So anytime you see A, you're supposed to put T. No, I will put you. This is the transcription. And then this transcription with the codon, what's the codon? The triplets. Triplets of what? Nucleotide. So these are triplets. And uh, which is called the codon. It will go to the ribosomes. And you're going to translate. Each codon will make one amino acid which is the triplets, okay? Each one of these triplets, uh, three bases, this is called a codon that will be translated into one amino acid. And then, look at these amino acids. So let's say codon here, this, make tryptophan, one of the amino acids. And the next one make uh, phenylalanine, and this make glycine and serine. So you have amino acids, right? These amino acids, you're going to hold them together to make a protein. What's in the protein is a group, a big chain of amino acids. Do you remember this? So you're producing them in the form of amino acids, and then you hold them together. So remember that the triplets on the nucleotides, the triplet is called kudan, right? And each one of the kudan will be translated into one amino acid. What do you call a group of codons together? Like this patch here of the DNA that have these codons. Gene. Gene. Gene is a group of codons. The code, the, the, the code or the codon represent amino acid. The gene represent protein. Is that clear? So what's the difference between DNA and RNA? We talked about those. Okay, let me ask you, uh, which one is double strand and which one is single strand? Yes. DNA is double and RNA is single strand. Okay, this is one. Number two, uh, what kind of bases do you have in the DNA, the four bases? ATCG. A, and what kind of bases do you have in RNA? A U C G, right? So you don't have thymine, you have uracil instead, right? How many RNA do you have? We talked about one of them, but how many do you have altogether? Three, three. We didn't. I didn't mention that, but I'm telling you, you have three. Messenger RNA is the one that's formed by transcription, right? You have another two coming. Ribosomal RNA and transfer RNA. You have three different types. And uh, last question, what kind of sugar do you have in, in DNA versus RNA? Deoxyribose. Deoxyribose versus? Ribose. Ribose, okay, great. So this is a comparison right here. Here is a DNA, ATCG, which is what you guys mentioned, right? ATCG versus AUCG. This is deoxyribose, this is ribose. 
See, here is a messenger RNA that have triplets that are called codons. And the sec so this is a messenger RNA. We talked about it. The second type of um, RNA is called a transfer RNA. What's a transfer RNA? Another RNA that acts as a translator for the messenger RNA and it is going to grab amino acids for you. It's doing two things. Translator and carrier. Transfer RNA. It's a translator and carrier. This is the one that's going to transfer. Okay? Um, how does the transfer RNA, since it's going to translate and grab you the amino acid that you need? How did it, how did it know which amino acid you want? They have an anticodon that fits into the code. Are we following? So we have this code, uh, AUG. What does it mean? Which amino acid? The transfer RNA that fits into this triplet, he will translate, and when he fits by anticodon, he's going to bring, translate first, and then bring the correspondent amino acid depending on the code. So which RNA have the code and which one, codon and which, which RNA have the anticodon? Which one have codon? Uh, RNA. Uh, Messenger RNA, right? Yeah. Right. And which one have the anticodon? tRNA. Yeah. And what else is it going to do besides translating codon versus anticodon? Yeah. Carrying the amino acid that you need. So this piece right here is called the anticodon, right? And this is why it's going to fit with the messenger RNA. What's the third one? It's called the ribosomal RNA, which is in the ribosomes. And what's the ribosomes? It's ribosomal RNA with protein. What is the ribosome? The ribosome is ribosomal RNA packed with protein. So is there is a difference between ribosome and ribosomal RNA? Yes. Ribosome is ribosomal RNA packed with protein. Is there, is there is a difference between chromosome and DNA? Yes, chromosome is DNA around protein. Is that clear or not? Did you get the difference? You cannot say that chromosome is the same as, same as DNA because chromosome is DNA around protein, which is called histone. You ca the same way, you cannot say ribosome is the same as ribosomal RNA. It is not. It's ribosomal RNA around the protein. Both of them. Clear? Okay. So what is it uh, the ribosomal RNA is going to do? What's the, 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 what, why do we need it? You have messenger RNA that have the codon and the transfer RNA that have the anticodon to fit and it will get you the messenger RNA. Why do you need a third one? The third one is going to hold those together, like housing this whole process. You get the idea? I have a codon here and the anticodon will come. Where? Where is going to housing those? Where, who is going to keep those together? It's a ribosomal RNA which is in the ribosome, which consists of two uh, components. One is big and the other one is small. Okay? So how are you going to translate, which is called the gene expression? How are you going to express gene expression? You're going to express, meaning translate. Clear? Gene expression. What's the gene expression? You're going to express the gene. What do you mean? To translate it. Transcription. Uh, I, mean, I mean translation, sorry, translation. How are you going to start this process? You're going to start with the initiation first. RNA polymerase is going to hold to a promoter. I mentioned that before, right? So what's your very first step if you wanted to, to translate? RNA polymerase. Yeah, this is an enzyme, right? It's an enzyme, so it's important. RNA polymerase. RNA polymerase is going to bind to a promoter. Okay, then you're going to uh, make elongation. RNA polymerase is also going to add nucleotides, complementary to the template, until you come to the point which is called termination. When you see a code, 
that means stop, this is where you end. Like this, I'm making, I'm going through this, okay? Go, 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 until what? Until I see a sign that says stop. What is that sign? You will see it. Now, what was the codon again? It's code for what? What's the codon codes for? Codon not for protein. Gene is for protein. Codon is for? Or? The code. This. Amino acid. I know it's kind of confusing, but look at this again. I will repeat again, don't worry. The chromosome is DNA around histone, is that clear? I'm talking about the DNA now, I don't care about the histone. DNA, it's a double strand, right? Piece after piece after piece after piece. Each piece is called gene. The gene corresponds to a protein. It carries instructions for one protein, clear. Within the gene, you have codons. Each code, codon will mean amino acid. Isn't the protein is a chain of amino acid? Isn't it? Okay, so the gene, the gene correspond to protein. The codon correspond to amino acid. Is that clear? Okay. So the codon will mean, each codon will mean amino acid. Here is something that they found to be interesting. You, you, don't, you do not need to know all these codes. There are four codes that you have to remember, but you will see a lot of codes. You don't have to know the codes exactly. Just look at it to understand what we're talking about. They found this interesting piece of information that they found that some uh, amino acids would be coded by more than one code. It's not just one code, okay? So UA, UAG and CUG, both of them would make the same amino acid. And we call that, the code in this case is redundant. Redundant. It does not necessarily one code for one amino acid. What redundant mean? More than one codon for the same amino acid. When you see it, you see codon number one or number two, in both cases I will bring the same amino acid. Is that clear? This is where we call it redundant. It's redundant. It's not one for one. It's, more, it's sometimes more than one for one. So look at this. Obviously this is too much. Okay? But look at this here. Look at this amino acid. Histidine is amino acid. How many codes do we have for the same amino acid? You see two? Look at this. For histidine. This and this. So when I see this, I will get you histidine. What if I see this? I will also get you histidine. So both of them code for the same thing? Yes, I call that redundant. Is that clear what redundant mean? More than one code for the same amino acid. Here are the codes that I want you to know. One, two, three. AUG, I remember it's WAG, WAG, WAGA. You can call it whatever you want, but you have to remember it. AUG is to start. AUG, translation, AUG, translation, start. Okay? Wag, wag, waga. One, two, three, stop. You have to remember this. Other than that, just understand the idea that it can be more than one code for each amino acid. Okay, this would be too much. To, uh, to memorize all these codes. Just the four codes. One for start and three for uh, finish. So now we're going to interpret these um, codes into amino acid. Transfer RNA is going to come, fit its anticodon to the code on the messenger RNA. It's going to bring the amino acid and then you're going to hold these amino acids together to make the protein. Um, so you will start with that when you see the AUG, you're going to start. 
and then you go from one to one to one each three will be an uh, uh, each uh, three will mean one amino acid which is the code transfer RNA is going to bring it and then each triplet which is a codon mean amino acid right so I see I see the first three look at this here this is a messenger RNA right what is this it's going to fit in here the anticodon so what what is this N no this is a transfer RNA what have the anticodon transfer RNA right so here I'm coming let me fit into this codon. I have the anticodon, right? Fit in. Yes, I can fit in. So um, anticodon, my anticodon versus the codon. So I'm the one responsible for tryptophan. I'm going to bring it. So look at this. Here, fit, amino acid. The next one will come and fit, another amino acid. The next one will come fit, and another amino acid. So I have amino acid, amino acid, amino acid. But these are separate, right? So I need to hold them together to make a protein, right? The bond between the amino acids is called a peptide bond. Okay? And then when the transfer RNA uh, brings the amino acid, it's going to be released and go back to the cytoplasm. How long are you going to go? Until I see the stop, which is where wag waga. Where wag waga. Okay? Any one of those three, when I see it, I have to stop. That's it, I, I'm done. So you, you translate it now into uh, 200 amino acids. And then you see the stop sign, that's it. Then you're going to hold the amino acids together to make the protein. Here are the termination codes again. And these termination codes does not correspond to transfer RNA. Are we clear? The, the wag, wag, waga, these termination codes, the stop codes, it's not going to be translated. So if there is a transfer RNA for any one of those three, no. When you see it, you stop. You don't get a, a tRNA and you do not get an amino acid anymore. You're done. Once you see it, just read. Oh, I see this sign. So if there is an anticodon for this, for, uh, for, for uh, tRNA, no, there is not for those three. Okay? So let's just watch this. Video, I hope it will uh, make it more clear. Okay, here is one thing that's um, uh, important to remember that so far we're talking about uh, transcription that happened, then you have messenger RNA, right? And then the messenger RNA leave the nucleus and go to the ribosome where the translation occurred, right? This is not the case for the bacteria, for the prokaryotes. Why? Because you don't have nucleus in the first place. So you translate at the same time. Translation and transcription happen simultaneously. Do you get what I mean? You're, you're, you're making the messenger RNA and I'm translating at the same time. This is only for prokaryotes, which is bacteria. Which one of those is right? D. 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 Translator and carry amino acids. Right? Okay. Codon, anticodon. Can you give me... Uh, this is a codon for three uni. What's the anticodon? UGC, yes. Uh, in prokaryotes, bacteria, for example, uh, they have a regu uh, the, the way the process is regulated is through something called operon. Operon is coming like from operating something. It's a group of genes that will it's going to regulate only in the uh, uh, bacteria. Or prokaryotes. So the operon can be inducible or repressible. Okay, inducible means it's not 
working, it's off, but you can induce it. It's off, this is normal, it's off, but you can induce it. So if you need it, uh, um, uh, induce it. Like the lactose operon, for example. If you want it lactose, you have to switch it on. It's off already. The other way around, or the other type of, of operon is repressible. It's working all the time, which is something obviously you need all the time. But you can turn it off, which is repress it. You can repress. It's working, but you can stop it. Inducible, it's off, but you can turn it on. So can you answer this? Yes. Okay. Okay, now mutations. Mutation, again, can occur in any level, whether during replication or during transcription. You can do a mistake, right? Mistakes can happen. Um, which is the basis, the sequence can change, mutate, the nutritional base, like this. This is the code, right? If you change something here, this will lead to, which is the genotype, right? It will lead to a different phenotype. So here we're going to call the, 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 the natural, non-mutated type, we'll call it the wild strain or the wild type. If it is mutated, we call it the mutant strain, okay? Wild is the normal that does not have any issues. Mutant is the one that's mutated for some reason, okay? And obviously the phenotype that will, that will be produced because of that would be different according to the type of mutation. Mutation can happen, can happen spontaneously, but it can be also induced. What do you mean? Spontaneously, it just happens. You don't know what, why, it's random. Something happened during replication. You did a mistake, right? And it happened automatically, by itself. Nothing induced it. The other type is called induced. There is something that's called mutagen. <coughs> Mut muta Gen, what's muta means? Mutation. mutation. What's gem? Generation. generation. So this is something that's going to generate mutation. It's going to induce mutation. What is that something? It can be a physical, it can be a chemical compound. Sometimes it can be even a virus. So, and, and that's why, for example, um, we, we, we always tell you, if you are in an airport and you're traveling, or you're traveling a lot, try to avoid the x-ray, right? If you travel every now and then, that's fine. But if you travel on a regular basis, like some people every two weeks or something, they travel all the time, try to avoid the x-ray. Why try to avoid, avoid the x-ray in the airport? Because the x-ray is mutagen. It can induce mutation. You expose to that so many times, it can lead to change in that code. And, and it will lead to a mutation. Um, this is just something to take a look at it. Um, it would be too much to ask you about this. Just look at it. Mutagens. Chemical mutagens, radiation mutagens. Something like nitrous oxide, nitrous oxide for example, something like uh, analogs, something like the X-ray for radiation, ultraviolet ray. Like they always say, uh, you're not su supposed to stay in the sun or exposed to ultraviolet radiation a lot of times. You can get skin cancer, right? Why? Because the ultraviolet, in this case, is going to cause a mutation, right? Uh, ultraviolet, specifically, is going to cause cross-link between the, the pyramids. This is what's going to This is too much details. Just look at it and understand what we're talking about. Whatever the change is, you are going to link the pyramids together, or you're going to remove something or add something, whatever it is, it's going to lead to a uh, mutation anyway. And the mutation can be of different de types, and this is very important here, um, the uh, slide to, to know, to remember, and we need to understand it first. Point mutation is you're mu mutating at a point. And when we say point, we mean the base, one of the bases, one or more, okay? Uh, what are you going to do with the bases? Look at this. What if I did this? Deletion, right? I can delete one of the bases. Or, put it back, I can add, like this, right? 
You can delete, you can add one or more. So we call that point mutation. Point means base. You're doing something with the base, whatever it is, adding, deleting, whatever it is. Missions means when you sw change something, like I'm going to look at this here. Uh, this triplet here means uh, methylene, okay? If I remove this and put another one here, switch. It will be translated into another amino acid. And we call that missions. Missions. So you're missing, just to remember it. Missions, you're missing the right amino acid. It doesn't exactly mean that, just to, to remember. Missions, you're missing the right amino acid. You changed one of the bases, so you changed the amino acid. Nonsense means you change this, okay, and the new one will mean stop. It's wa wa guaga. It will be one of those, right? It's change. It's be U A A whatever it is. We call that nonsense. To remember it, this is how I remember it. It's nonsense to stop all of a sudden. It's nonsense to stop. It's nonsense to stop. Okay. Silent mutation. That's not bad. Remember the redundancy that we talked about? So you have more than one code. So if it just happens that you switched one, one code with another code and you are lucky that it means the same amino acid. Can it happen? Yes, it's silent. Silent means basically no bad result. Okay? You're fortunate enough that you change the code to the same amino acid. Silent. Bad mutation is to mutate the opposite way. You did some mut um, something was wrong, and you actually mutate to the right one. Bad mutation. Frame shift is whether you are deleting or adding, you are changing the whole um, frame. And what we mean by frame is like this: one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Right? If I add something here, this is the frame, right? Frame number one, frame number two, frame number three, right? What if I added this here? The whole frame will be shifted. Look, this will be one, and this will be one, and this will be one. Isn't this shifting the frame? Yes. And the same if you delete, okay, if I remove this. So here's what's going to happen. This is going to be one, and this is going to be one. Did you get the idea? Yes. So how can we get the frame shift if you delete or if you add? In both cases, it's going to shift. Shift to the right or shift to the left, it's a frame shift anyway. Okay? Is that clear? So this is a frame shift. So when you get the frame shift, in which type? A deletion or addition? Deletion or addition. In both cases, you get the frame will be shifted. Like it was A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, for example. Okay? and you remove the C, so it will become, instead of ABC, it will become ABD, right? And now you're shifting the whole thing. Everything after that will be different. And when you make it different, most of the time it's harmful, okay? Sometimes it's not harmful, most of the time it is harmful. So the non-mutated, we call it the wild type, okay? So this is just to practice what we talked about. The big, bad, cat, ate, their, fat, red block, okay? Just an example. So this is three, 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 three. This is the normal frame, okay? This is a wild type, the normal frame. So here is scenario number one. You are going to substitute. Instead of the big bad, it's a substitute, substitution. It's not deletion or addition, right? It's just substitute. So instead of B, you change this one, okay? So this will become mad. Bad means an amino acid. Mad means another amino acid, okay? So this is called missing. You're missing the right amino acid, just to remember it. Nonsense. The big bad, what's the cat? A big bad cat, instead of cat, you change the code and now it means stop. Okay? So that will be the nonsense. And this will lead to premature termination of the protein. And this type is usually the severe type. Okay? 
uh, the other type, the, the missing type that we just talked about, it depends. Like you change this amino acid to another amino acid. How bad it is, I don't know. It depends on which amino acid and is it going to change much or not. But this is always severe. Most of the time it's severe. Why? Because you stopped. You're making a bad routine anyway. Okay? Did you get the difference? The missing is not as bad. Frame shift can become from insertion or deletion. And here it is, you insert, delete, and you're going to change the whole frame. And everything from that point, so you started here, right? Anything before that, it was fine, right? Once you add it or delete it, everything after that, all of it will be translated into something that's different, right? Which is usually non-functional. Missions, is it severe or not? It depends on... Is it bad or not? Is it severe or not? I don't know. It depends on what amino acid did you <laughs> substitute? Did you switch? Termination is bad. Always. Okay? Uh, which is the nonsense. Frame shaft, it's non-functional. You'll make a protein that's non-functional. Uh, can, uh, can you repair the mutation? Most of the time, you can repair it. You have some enzymes that will try as much as possible to maintain the integrity of these uh, codes. So what else, wh what exactly do we have that try to maintain? And you have to fail all of this in order to get the mutation, right? So actually, practically speaking, you have a lot to keep your uh, codes correct. You have DNA polymerase, for example. It's going to, pr uh, to, to proofread the nucleotides. So not only that you put the nucleotides together, the DNA polymerase will say, okay, to avoid mutation, let me proofread it. Let me sh make sure that you actually did the right thing before we move forward, right? The DNA polymerase. Uh, you can also repair in the mismatch. If you're mismatching, like, isn't it supposed to be ATCG, right? And what if you put the, try to put the A with C? No, this is a mismatch. I'm going to correct it and repair it, okay? So this is if you skip, like polymerase, I did the proofreading, you're good. Okay, what if you did the proofreading but you missed something and you did a mismatch? I'm going to repair it, right? Uh, if you are exposed to ultraviolet radiation, I can do the repair too. So not because you're exposed to ultraviolet radiation, you have to get a cancer. You get a cancer if you did not repair. So you can repair still. Excision repair. If, if, there, if this part is bad, you can excise. Excise means to cut, right? This part is bad, I can do excise. If you failed all of this, try to proofread it. You skip it. You see a mismatch, repair it. Ultraviolet radiation change something, and you repair it. You excise the If you skip all of this, you end up having the mutation. So it, it, it will be permanent then. Um, Specifically for the chemical mutagens, there is a test that's called the ANIS test, and this test is to, to detect the chemicals that have potential, potentially carcinogenic. Okay, so if you're working in a factory or working on something um, specific in a factory, they have to do the ANIS test. They have to know: Do we have one of these chemicals that are carcinogenic or not? If we have it. We need to do something in this factory. If you don't have it, the AIMS test will be negative and you're fine. You don't have any one of these chemicals. Usually the mutations will have a bad effect, negative, but not all the time. Sometimes the, the, uh, the mutation can be positive. It can make something that's good. Most of the time it is either non-functional or harmful, right? non-functional or harmful. But sometimes it's not any of those. Sometimes it's, it's actually good. Uh, good. Good for the organism. Like for bacteria, for example. Uh, we used to, do you, do you remember that um, 50 years ago they used to use some antibiotics and they don't use it anymore now? Yes, it's very old. What happened here is that the bacteria, for some reason, got a mutation. And this mutation resulted in the bacteria become resistant to the antibiotics. So the ones that do not have this mutation will die. 
the one that's got the mutation and become resistant will survive and these are the ones that are going to stay and continue with us right so is that good or bad for the bacteria this type of mutation it's good for them isn't it it's good for them so this is a positive one okay uh, let's say fish for example okay we know that in ancient time there was a lot uh, more ice than what we have now right so some of these fish that used to live there, right? When it started to melt down, this is not their normal habitat. They are going to die. But some of these fish, some, something happened to it, and they got mutation. I'm just giving you examples. This mutation resulted in that their body can take care of that. It, it changes the temperature. They are going to survive. Isn't that something good for them? So it can be positive, it can be negative. If it results in them to accommodate their environment, this is something good. Good for them. Uh, can you tell me which one of those? D, deletion. What, what's, what, what else besides deletion? Insertion. Deletion and insertion lead to frame shift. None of those. Right? What silent mean? Yes, it leads to the same amino acid. Silent. Missing, you're missing the right amino acid, right? So you change the amino acid. A and this is usually substitution. You, you didn't delete, you switched. Okay? Nonsense? Stop. It's nonsense to stop like this. Deletion, if there is E, we say insertion, it will be D and E, right? Just in case. DNA recombination means, I talked about it a little bit, that you recombine. I mean, you take a piece from here and you recombine it with another DNA. So genetic recombination, and we talked about it before, it can happen automatically, it can happen uh, in the lab, you can do it either way. And this genetic recombination and also mutation, both of those can lead to variation in the microorganism that used to be identical. What does that mean? Uh, here is what it means. This is a type of bacteria, okay? E. coli, for example. All of the E. coli are the same, all right? And then either a mutation happened or a recombination. Recombination is not a mutation. Recombination is you get this patch and you add it, recombine it, right? So whether we're talking about recombination happened or mutation happened, in both cases, you instead of having one type of E. coli, now you have two types, right? It can lead to three, four, five different types. And this is where we start saying uh, type one, type two, what, why is it type one, type two? In the ancient time, it was only one type, right? Why is it two, three, four, five types now? Because either recombination or mutation, clear? There is an enzyme that's called restriction enzyme, and this is an enzyme that can, uh, if you talk about recombination, like you're telling me, I will take this piece and combine it with another DNA. How did you cut this piece? Restriction enzyme. It's going to cut that piece, and the ends will be sticky, so it was going to stick with the other DNA. Okay? Um, in order to do re recombination, we're talking about recombination now, uh, it's either conjugation, transformation, and transduction. You have three different types. Conjugation, in order to do that, we will talk about it, you need a plasmid and a bacterial se sex pilus. A sex pilus is like a sex organ that's going to transmit from one to one. Uh, transformation, this is something that we do in the lab. Transduction, you're using a virus to transduce it. So conjugation, if you look at this picture right there, it needs a plasmid, and you need this six pilots. And through this six pilots, a piece from this is going to leave one and go to the other, like this. Okay? You're cutting this piece, go to the other one. It can go from bacteria to bacteria, for example. And what's going to help you to do that is the plasmid. So what do I need to make this conjugation? Con conjugation will need two things. Number one, I need to... to <coughs> Friends, um, recombine a piece from here, bacteria number one, to bacteria number two. I need 
to uh, recombine this to this. What do I need to do that? If it is conjugation, I need two things. You need a class means, and you need this six pilot. Okay? The six pilot is through which this is going to leave, and the class mean is what's going to transfer it to the next one. And then it will go and join the new uh, DNA. So here is conjugation. What is this? This is a six pilot, right? So plasmid is here. Plasmid is the one that's going to take this piece, go through the six pilots, transfer it to the new uh, bacteria. Okay? Transformation, on the other hand, it, it, it's using, uh, it's going to be a donor. It's a piece of DNA, for example, a fragment that leaves its spot and go and uh, be transformed into another piece. And this is something that we use in the lab. Here is what you do in the lab. You get that piece from somewhere and you insert it into it. From the donor and you insert it into the recipient. This is usually done in the lab. For, for um, uh, recombinant DNA technology in the lab. Trans transduction, in the, on the other hand, will use bacteriophage. If you wanted to do that, use a bacteriophage. Do you remember the bacteriophage? What's a bacteriophage? It's a virus that infects the bacteria. Yes, a virus infects the bacteria. When this virus infects the bacteria, it will take a piece of DNA, introduce it. When it gets into that, it will introduce it. So you need bacteriophage. You need a bacteriophage. Uh, when I need uh, plasmid, not a bacteriophage, when I need a plasmid, what do you call the, the process? And it's six pilots. We call it... Conjugation. So when you're using plasmid, conjugation. If you're using bacteriophage, transduction, transformation in the lab. Okay? A piece in the lab. Can you answer this? Mediated by a plasmid. Using a plasmid is conjugation. Okay, so that's it for this chapter.